Yo, 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 what's up everyone? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna dive into JavaScript data types. And let me tell you, this is gonna be a lot of fun. But you know what else is fun? Going to a boot camp. So not like, you know, those boot camps where you have to exercise and stuff. <laughs> no way. I am talking about a coding boot camp, and I have one for you. It's called Dev Mountain. You need to check Dev Mountain out, guys. I'll leave a link for you in the description. If you let them know I sent you, they'll give you 250 off the tuition. And basically, their goal is to get you from complete newbie, don't know what you're doing, <laughs> to seasoned pro, professional JavaScript developer, or even an iOS developer, or a user experience engineer. Whatever you may want to be, they probably have something for you. So don't waste your time watching these boring videos. Check out the link and go to the boot camp. <laughs> With that, let's dive in. We're going to be talking about data types. And no, I don't want to update. Since we got rid of that boring iffy, we're going to be using these blocks to create variables. Throughout the series, I might just get rid of the blocks if I want to work with stuff interactively inside of the console in Chrome or whatever browser you're using. But for now, I'm going to be using the blocks here. First thing that you need to understand with JavaScript is that there are two main categories of data types. And let me tell you guys, anytime I can categorize things, I try to because it helps you memorize and understand. The two categories are primitive types and objects. We're going to be starting with the primitive types and learn all about them, how they work, and their differences between objects. This video is going to introduce you to the data types, and then the upcoming videos, we're going to be talking about how to use them in a lot of depth and doing some cool stuff that you might need to use in your future career. When we create a variable, such as x, we give it a value, and we don't have to say what type of variable this is. In JavaScript, variables do not have types because it's a dynamically typed language. This is in contrast to a statically typed language, and I've talked to you guys about this before. Hopefully it's nothing new if you've been watching this series. But basically, this is in contrast to some other languages where you might have to say something like int x equals 5 or 10 or whatever it may be. In the situation where you're in a statically typed language and you have to define that type, you couldn't do something like say x is equal to hello. This would give us an error in those languages because we're assigning a string to an integer variable. That whole concept does not exist in JavaScript, meaning we can assign anything to our variables. So right now, this is a number. But later on, I could say, hey, today, I want this to be a string. You need to understand data types in JavaScript because if you don't, you can get some weird issues. For example, there's something called coercion. Basically what this means is that JavaScript will convert between data types behind the scenes. So for example, I could create another variable. Let b be assigned the value, I don't know, 10. All right, and let's get rid of this string assignment here. Okay, so right now these are both numbers, but let's say we made b a string with the value 10. And now let's say we wanted to add these together so we could say x is equal to x plus b. When we console log this, we do a refresh, we get 510, which is odd. In other languages, you might get an error because you can't implicitly add a number with a string. In JavaScript, the number will just be converted to a string and we're basically just going to concatenate them or append them one right after the other. So we get the value 5 followed by the value 10. So it's not doing arithmetic, it's doing concatenation. Some people don't really like the fact that you don't define the data type of the variables. They believe, hey, it makes it not as structured, it makes it not as secure, it makes it easier to make mistakes. Whether that's true or not is totally up to you. I think that comes down to opinion and experience what you're used to. As a result, there are tools out there that will allow you to basically create JavaScript in a statically typed manner. So for example, there's something known as TypeScript. And TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, meaning part of the language is JavaScript and then there's some other stuff added into it. And what this will do is it will allow you to give types to your variables and it's going to transpile that, converting it to plain JavaScript. So if you want the protection of variable types in your JavaScript, check out TypeScript. It might be something interesting to you. But enough about that junk. Let's dive into the data types. Here on the JavaScript documentation, you can see that there are six primitive types. String, number, boolean, null, undefined, and symbol. Symbol is new. I'm not going to talk about that. You can find videos on it, I'm sure, if you want, but it's not going to be useful for us anytime soon. So we're going to be talking about the first five here and understand what they are. Let's talk about the easiest one first, boolean. This is just a true or false value. Simple as that. So if you wanted to create a boolean, you would just use the value true, no quotes, or false, no quotes. A string is a sequence of characters, where a character is an individual letter. 
In some languages, when you create a string, you have to use double quotes. But in JavaScript, you can use double or single. For example, I could say let my name and assign that a value of Caleb. See, there's double quotes here. But if I use single quotes, this works exactly the same way and we're not gonna get any issues. Now back to the data types, we have number, and this is one of the first one we're gonna talk about in depth. So we'll just hold off on that, but basically it's just a number without quotes. You've seen it in this series. Now let's talk a little bit about null and undefined, because this can be a little bit confusing. So when we create a variable, let me get rid of this block here. And, and let's say we create a variable tacos, and we're not going to initialize it with anything. So all we have right now is just a declared variable named tacos. And when we go over here, and we say tacos, we get the value undefined. You'll usually see undefined when the variable hasn't been used and there's nothing for it yet. Undefined basically means nothing. And there's a very similar data type called null, but the usage is a little bit different. So for example, we can assign the value null to this variable. Now, when we go to tacos, we get null. It means basically the same thing, but usually null is used when we want to explicitly say tacos has an absence of a value. Undefined, on the other hand, is given by default, meaning we haven't assigned to the variable. So usually let the computer use undefined and we can use null. That's the primary difference. You'll also see in the docs that primitives are immutable. This basically means they can't be altered. So when you reassign to a variable, you're basically throwing out the old value and giving it a new value. Sometimes it might appear like a value that is a primitive is changing, but they're immutable and they cannot change. This is in contrast to objects, arrays, and functions, which can be altered, and those are what we're gonna be talking about now. So the other classification of data types are objects. So an array is an object and a function is an object. So it's kind of like this container that fits everything else that's not a primitive. Let's create an object just to see how it works. So we might say let person equals, and then we use these curly braces. So an object is just a collection of key value pairs. For example, we can give this person a name. We can say his name's Caleb, and then we put a comma. We can give him an age, and we could say his age is 93. I have a young voice and we can give this person a favorite food. So these are the keys and these are the values. This is the basic structure of an object and it's very simple to create objects inside of JavaScript if you basically just want to group variables together. Cause in theory, we could have made three different variables. We could have said let name be Caleb, age be 93 and fave food be pizza obviously. But then we have to keep track of all three of those variables. It doesn't really allow for scalable applications, and we really just need to encapsulate all of our stuff inside of objects for our sanity. The things inside of the objects can have lots of names. I'll call them by properties. So name is a property, and that's what this editor says here, property. But you might hear them as members, which is a little bit more general. You might hear them as fields occasionally, which are usually private properties, and we'll talk about that later. But in general, most of the time, you're going to hear the term property. Inside of an object, you can even have functions. So if I wanted, I could create a function in here that will, I don't know, say yay. So in order to access the members or the properties of the person outside here, we could say person dot fun and then call it. And then when we do a refresh, we get yay. So that's fun. When we create a function inside of an object, it is technically kind of a property, but you'll often hear it known as a method. So this here is a method, and we've talked about methods. A lot of things we've used have methods on them, and methods are unique to objects. So the primitives don't have methods. We're going to dive in a lot more depth on objects, but now just get a good feel for how they work. We give basically key value pairs. The one on the left always has no quotes. The right could have quotes if it's a string or just a value like 93. It can even be a function. And just to review, you could say all of the stuff are the members of the object, or you could say, hey, these are the properties and this is the method. You'll get more familiar with the language as we go on, so don't be uptight if you uh, don't have all that down perfectly. But just so you know, you can access the members of an object using the dot operator. So you put the name of the object and then you say dot and then you put the member name. If it's a method, you have to use parentheses. If it's a property, you don't use parentheses. So in this example, you can access the age like so. 
and you could print that or you could add to it, whatever it may be. There are other types of objects that we don't necessarily have to define every single thing by ourselves. So for example, if we get rid of all this, we could create a date by doing let now be new date. This is going to create a date object. And you can see now is a date. Over here, you can see what that looks like. We also have arrays. Arrays allow us to store multiple values, like so. And you can also output that. You can see the value of grades. The thing I want to emphasize is that all of these more complex things we've created are all objects. If it's not one of the six primitive types, it is an object. The reason it's an object is because of what's known as the prototype chain. And this is basically JavaScript inheritance, which is basically a fancy word of saying, where in the world does this array come from? Oh, it comes from an object. And you can see that inside of the browser if you expand grades as an example, you can see this proto property, which is an array, and then if you scroll down some more, hmm, proto, object. So this thing ultimately inherits from object. So even though it's an array, it's also an object. Everything ultimately sources from object. So that is your introduction to primitives and objects. In the next video, we're going to go in a little bit more depth between some of the differences and just, you know, just feeling them out, getting some more info, because right now we have a pretty good basic understanding, but I want to make sure you guys have a pretty solid understanding. So please check out that video and please be sure to subscribe.